And welcome to Hero Power. This is episode 98, guys. We are almost there. So, uh, I am your host, Avantes, and as always, I am joined by my co-host, Zoroshio. What is up, gang? And Mr. I'm Always Right, Versika. <laughs> I love it. Oh, all right, gang. So we've got a great show lined up for you today. A lot to talk about, and uh, lots to talk about. You know, it's gonna. This is this is a little different. Um, because normally we would jump right into it. You know, we don't have any emails this week. We don't have any. Uh, we don't have any uh, iTunes reviews. So. I guess we jump right into the news. Yeah. So speaking of news, um, we'll get right to the first topic. The Twitch Prime Oktoberfest has went live. So if you're a, a Twitch Prime subscriber, you can get your uh, Void, Team Void, and Team Salt. I'm sorry, Team Light card backs. And if you play with them, you will earn packs for the respective teams. We talked about it last week, but it is now officially live as of, was it yesterday? Or was it Monday? It was Monday, the, the 11th. And it goes through October 12th. Uh, are you guys rocking your card backs yet? Absolutely. I'm uh, rocking Team Light because I like that card back. Yeah, I mean... I'm I'm rocking Team Lot as well because I I like that really? group. I like uh, Rain Ad and I like Ali Straza, So see, I am definitely Team Void. Now I will admit I like the again I, I refuse to call it Team Light. That I see the white border and it looks like Salt to me. Crip and and Kriparian and Rain Ad are on that team. It's got to be Salt. But uh, I like that card back better. But I really can't go against. Tice. I mean, Ty Dog is a very impressive. I love Jackie Chan's ingenuity. I think when it comes to deck building, he's going to be the best. Um, but I really love Tice, and, and I love the excitement that he has in this tournament, or in this uh, kind of like a playoff thing that they're doing between the teams. Um, so I'm definitely rocking the Void card back, and so far, it looks like the popularity lies with the Void card back. Well, it may increase. We'll just have to see if the uh, the Crip Boys and the Ra Team Rainad Tempo Storm followers start using that uh, light card back or not? See, I just you don't think. Uh, I was gonna say, I just don't think the teams were fair split to begin with. I, I don't, don't. I don't think it matters who's on the teams. Okay. I I, I, I don't. I, there there's no incentive. Like they didn't offer a card. Like you don't get packs for whichever team wins, or you know, there's there's no reason to use the card back unless you're invested in the outcome, which I don't think very many people are. Um, so I think it all goes on looks, and I think they did a better job designing the void card back. I think yeah, it's, it's more appealing to the masses. Okay. Yeah, I, I guess I could understand that in a way. Personally, I think. The light card back is is better card back. The void card back looks too much like other card backs that exist already, where the light one doesn't. Uh, so I think if you like a unique card back, you go with the light. But the void card back does seem to be the most popular. Maybe people just like those dark colors. Well, the animation on it is very yes. The noticeable. animation is better. Yeah, and I think that you know. It's, it's I don't know. I like the subtlety of the light myself, but again, I'm using the void card back because of Tice, namely just Tice. Uh, as soon as the uh, the event's over, I'm probably going to switch over to the light card back. You see, what I would have liked to have seen happen would have been we had to choose between the two card backs, and then whichever team won got both card backs, or maybe good. something. Okay. You know, maybe something like if. If you support your team and your team wins, then you get three free packs and you and get a, you know, something like that. That's not unheard of because uh, they've done that in World of Warcraft with the choppers. 
uh, for the Orange County chapter. Cha- well, it wasn't the Orange mm-hmm. County choppers, but it was it was the choppers made mm-hmm. the actual ones that were made, and the the horde won, so they were able to get both bikes available to them, and then the Alliance didn't, so they had to buy theirs in game. So yeah, I, I could understand they've done something like this before, it, so there is a is a precedence for it. Um, one thing that I want to mention before we move on to esports news, and I didn't put it in show notes, I, I'd forgotten, I meant to. Today, they just announced the BlizzCon virtual tickets. Go to blizzcon.com, you can get your virtual pass. I'm not going to go into too much detail here because all the information's there, but you can, you can get your goodie bags and all that stuff uh, now. And there's actually some video production stuff, some on demand stuff that they're offering you to watch now before BlizzCon. It's, it's pretty neat. They've really increased the, the packages and uh, it's going to be, it's going to be the virtual tickets going to be more enjoyable than it has been in the past. Awesome. I look forward to purchasing my virtual ticket here when I get back from my trip this weekend. And yeah, they had a stream about it like four and a half hours ago. So it's awesome. fairly fresh news. All right, cool. All right, so that brings us, I guess, to our next topic of uh, the night, which was this past weekend was DreamHack Montreal. Oh, yeah. So I know there was a lot of really fun, uh, fun-looking fun decks that were played there this weekend. In fact, we are actually playing one of them on the show later tonight. Mm-hmm. But uh, what, were your, uh, what were your takeaways from DreamHack Montreal, Zerushio? Uh, you had some really star-studded uh, players attend this event. Obviously, your Dr. Jekaninkis and and you had the Rat was in there. He he performed really well. Hot Meowth, Racy. You had some really well unknown players as well. Um, Insom. Um, there's quite a few that that went there. One standout was Waleom who actually has not been playing all that long. He's actually a professional Magic the Gathering player. Now, he got a lot of flack because he made a large amount of mechanical misplays. By What I mean by mechanical misplays is more of it's like ordering, positioning, uh, you know, not drawing first, drawing last. Things that a normal Hearthstone professional, uh, you know, knows not to do. Uh, he kind of made those simple mistakes. Now, he didn't make any obvious, like, mislethal or, or, you know, losing too much damage type of misplays, which actually got him pretty far in the tournament. He went, he went, he, I think he made it all the way up to the round uh, of single elimination top 16. Um, but I was really impressed how somebody from another game can come over and perform so well with very little experience. This was his first major, first tournament that he had attended and Hearthstone kind of was told to play it and kind of picked it up. But the big story of the weekend was Zelay and Muzzy. Now, last call's coming up, and the last call tournament's going to decide the last remaining spots to go to champion- world championships for Hearthstone, for the uh, Hearthstone Championship Tour. However, the, the top point earner at the end of the entire season uh Instead of going to the last call tournament, they will advance directly to the world championships. And right now, it's a neck and neck race in points with Zelay and Muzzy at the beginning of DreamHack. So the big story was who's going to earn more points in DreamHack? Well, they battled it out amazingly. They both ended up making the top 16, if I'm not mistaken. And then, uh, Zelay gets knocked out, and Muzzy goes on to win DreamHack Montreal, defeating Suyun, who's actually a THL member. Uh, we pl- I play with him in the league. And third and fourth place went to Hot Meowth and Insom. Very impressive action. Did you guys get to watch any of this? Yes. So what were your thoughts, Versika? I, I enjoy the Last Hero Standing format. Um, when there's real counters to popular decks, and I I felt like coming in, there was only one deck besides Jade Druid that I hadn't really seen a uh, like a 100% counter to, and then Terrence M brought it. In fact, 
will play it tonight, which was a counter to the Rizaka, uh, Rizaka Priest. And, you know, Racy, or not Racy, was it Racy? Racy was there. No. Who am I thinking of? I can't remember who it was now, but he brought a warrior that kind of did the same thing. It's what mm-hmm. we're, or tried to do the same thing as what we we're going to play tonight. And uh, he brought uh, Miracle Rogue. It was just, it was, it was a nice mix of some different takes on some of the decks we've been seeing in the meta. So I enjoyed seeing that. I don't know that these decks are necessarily viable in the uh, uh, the standard format, but last year was standing. I enjoyed watching them have to really look at ordering and not only the important. It wasn't just the importance of when you chose to play your deck, but predicting what your opponent was going to play in against it because you really only had one shot. Yeah. So, and, uh, and, and you're referring like to conqu- Conquest as opposed to Last well, Year Standing, right? Yeah. Okay. So the, the standard Blizzard format, you can choose a deck and you can say, I'm not going to get beaten by this deck. I'm going to ban this deck. I'm not going to get beaten by this deck. And that's kind of... Well, it, it's, it's, it's counter... It's countering the meta. You're, you're yeah. playing counter meta. And it's so much easier to do in the standard format. But when you get into Last Year Standing... You, it's so much harder to target a deck. You almost have to be willing to sacrifice your first deck in this hopes that they're not going to play the deck that you're hoping to counter and just kind of keep it back there as like a, well, I don't think they're ever going to open with this deck, so when they beat me with this deck, I'm going to bring this deck in to play against it. And it's just, it's it's a little bit of pre-game strategy, and you really have to know your opponent and watching them through the Swiss Swiss rounds and finding out is there a pattern to what they like to open with? Is there a pattern with what they like to close? You know, it's it's watching them and seeing how they play against the opponents that they're playing throughout. And because they have to look at each other across the screens, I like that too. Yeah. So it's 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 sort of it's bringing in the elements that I like about poker and really fleshing them out in the tournament scene you know my biggest problem with dreamhack atlanta was that we didn't get to see them on the stage they were behind the curtain but just the fact that they were still looking across at each other while they were playing you know i I watched a lot of terrence m um this weekend just replaying through what he had he had done and watching his tales and that was really fun and I'm something I'm going to go back with all, all the players eventually and watch their games and look for those tells when they draw into something and, you know, when they're worried and when they're looking for something in particular, when they're nervous that they're not going to get to something. So it was really cool to look at the, the subtleties that I feel like doesn't really play out as much in the standard format. Yeah, something I noticed with DreamHack normally – the two the featured match they put the monitors back to back and obviously the players are behind the monitors but they would literally have to look over the monitor to see their opponent and the monitor kind of blocks their view a bit well at montreal they kind of had them back to back but they were off centered so you would see them looking at their monitor and then they'd look off to the left or right respectively depending what side out of the corner of their eye and kind of you see a smirk, especially from Dr. Jikaniki. He was really getting into the whole interaction. And Racy, uh, there was a match with, with Racy versus Dr. Jikaniki. It was really neat. And they, they could see each other kind of. And, and and you knew when your opponent was looking at you because they looked to the side and looked right at you. So it was really neat. I hope that DreamHack adopts this kind of layout with their featured match in the future because it, it does remind you a lot of head heads head-to-head poker, heads-up poker, as they like to call it. Uh, one thing that stood out to me is TARS. Everybody pretty much came in with the band Druid lineup. TARS said, no, screw that. I'm going to let you play Druid. And he punished people for, for playing Druid because just about everybody who who was allowed to play Druid opened with it because they're like, if you're going to let me play Druid, I'm going to win with Druid. And he just blew them out of the water. And I think it was a mixture of he planned to beat Druid, and he knew people were literally just bringing Druid 
to be banned and had hadn't really practiced with it because they assumed it's going to be banned. Why do I need to practice it? And so he took advantage of that and he made it uh, made it into to the uh, you know five through eight range. Uh, so he made it to that second round of elimination in the, in the uh, single elimination with four HCT points. And I'm really impressed. Uh, going back to the points for HCT, Zelay ends the tournament with two HCT points, and Muzzy ends the tournament winning it with 15. So he jumps 13 additional points, which I think he was a point behind Zelay, if I'm not mistaken. And that's going to be a huge gap that Zelay's going to have to find a way to win points. He's going to have to enter some online tournaments. And really, I'm really excited to see what the end of the season for North America is on, on the ladder because Zelay and Muzzy are just going to be battling it out. Yeah, I didn't actually get to watch a whole lot of it. Um, Saturday, I was I was busy running uh, two events on Saturday, including the one I'm getting ready to talk about. And then Sunday, I was just running around all day with like a chicken with my head cut off. So, unfortunately, I didn't get to watch a lot of uh, DreamHack. I need to go back what? and check the VOD. What tournament happened s Saturday? Uh, there was this this little tournament called the Hero Power Patron Tournament. Oh, oh did I yeah. miss it? <laughs> so, it was, it was <laughs> as always, so much fun. Oh, you never know what though. you're going to see in these tournaments. But, no. Uh, and this is no different. Yeah. Huge congratulations to Inked on winning it and securing his spot in the November event. And congratulations to Matt at Arms on his second place finish. He has also secured his uh, spot in the championship in November. So uh, congratulations to both those guys. And congratulations to everybody who participated Saturday. So much fun. It was a great event. We saw some really great decks, some really innovative play. Uh, yeah. I was I was really pleased with it. What how about you guys? I'll let Versika talk. I'll let Versika talk on this because I know he had had some really strong opinions, positive opinions on some of the decks and the plays. Uh so you go ahead. Uh, one of the things that I really like about our tournament is that People that are coming in, they're coming in from all different types of of Hearthstone backgrounds. For some, it's the only online tournament that they've done or are currently doing. For others, it's sort of that side event where they they've been playing in opens, and this is this is just another online tournament for them. And then for some, they've played in like actual events, and this is. You know, this is sort of a for fun tournament. Um, we had someone in this uh, in this event that had already qualified, mm -hmm. so um, it was it was interesting to see what he brought to the tournament because he had already qualified. It allowed him the luxury, I guess, to bring things that weren't quite in the norm um, because the pressure was off. Um, I felt like. As as we worked through um, the matches, I could I could see the lines of play, and I, I could see where our um, where our competitors were coming from and what they wanted to do. I could see elements of things that we had talked about, which made me feel kind of proud. Um, and then also the decks that were brought on our show, right? Even yeah. And then one of the other things that I really liked was watching the play from the people that I have watched play since the show started. So we're approaching episode 100. Um, some of the people that have played in the tournament, has they've been on my friends list for a long time. Some of the people are relatively new. In fact, uh, one of the guys in the tournament, I added him on Saturday. So, you know, it's it's one of those things where through watch and learn quests or where just, you know, just peeking in from time to time just to just to watch somebody play like I'm, I'm not a hearthstone creeper or anything but occasionally if it's someone that i know watches the show i'll pop over and watch a game or two um so it, it's really neat to watch the progression and to to watch the level of play not only from the decks that they brought and the tech that they've decided to include but you know getting to spectate both people is is a really neat tool mm -hmm. from a 
from a caster standpoint because we know what's in the other hand. We know what's in the other. And so we can watch the person work through what they think the opponent has. And that's a very, it's, it's very interesting to watch from a viewer perspective, but from a caster perspective where you're already having to kind of run that, that dialogue. Um, you know, Zeroshi and I were, were, were bouncing ideas off each other and we were, we were talking through lines of play and you could watch those lines of play develop and then you could see where they made the decision where either they were going to go with the line that we had talked about or they were going to go off on a different line. One of the yeah. things that I really enjoyed about this tournament is that I could see the alternative lines that they were going and I understood why they went down. And I think that's a reflection on not the Frozen Throne as an expansion and the impact that it's had on the game. You, you look at Knots of the Frozen Throne and Journey to Angoro behind it, um, a lot of the gaps and weaknesses that I felt like Journey to Angoro had have mostly been covered by Knots of the Frozen Throne. There's some things that Whispers brought to the table that maybe were a little too powerful or maybe weren't powerful enough that are either being erased completely or you're starting to see you're starting to see sort of a power check by Blizzard to keep this under control until it can rotate out. And I really enjoyed that. So starting to see these things take place in a non-pro environment is is a lot of fun for me. Um, not only because you know, these are people that, that we know and love, but also it's, it's watching the average Joe Hearthstone community grow from a player base of well 75 percent of the hearthstone players in the world are ranked 15 or below you know now you can start to see maybe those numbers may starting to be shifting upward as people get better play as they play better you start to see them kind of shift up past that rank 15 i know it's designed to be bottom heavy but as you see the people that you know day in and day out start to progress You've got to assume that that average player skill level is starting to progress with them. Yeah, I, I can't I can't agree more with everything you said. I really don't want to elaborate much more than that because you said it so eloquently. The only thing I do want to bring up is that all of our patrons that uh, that support us over at patreon.com slash hero power are pros in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. But now, yeah, I also want to move on to the next tournament. Well, uh, uh, b before we do that, I want to okay. also throw a huge shout out and say thank you to Boyd for helping me out this yes. weekend. So, I I wanted to give a, a shout out to the Hearth Coach crew. Uh, they also held a, a tournament the next day on Sunday. The what was it? The ninth, the tenth, Sunday the tenth, uh, and uh, for their patrons, and I want to appreciate show them some appreciation. Uh, that tournament was won by a wonderful player by the name of Risen, uh, and then I happened to sneak in there third place, and and uh, took the third place title uh, with. Uh, I'm sorry, I took stuck in there second place, took the second place title where. Uh, uh, wait, what am I talking about? <laughs> I'm mixing up two tournaments that I you're was thinking in. Thinking yeah. of, I've been in too many tournaments. Yeah, you're we talked about that of last the week. Sixteen hundred dust tournament. I took the third place tournament and the the winner of the hearth coach tournament uh now that i've totally blew my brain uh you can get that on their next episode over at hearthcoach.net but i want to give a big shout out and uh keep him in your thoughts dan over at hearth coach he is dealing with uh devastation from irma so go to hearthcoach.net and tweet at Hearth Coach. At Metal Dan uh, 66. And at, and at, at Metal Dan 66. And at Fred Gaming um, for his support because he he really, they're going to, I think they're going to miss an episode this week because of some of the damage over at Irma. And everybody who has family down at Irma, make sure they're safe. Uh, so far, all of my friends and family down there have dodged, you know, a lot of the big devastation. But keep them in your thoughts. Yeah, absolutely. So, all right. Well, we also. On top of DreamHack and the Hero mm -hmm. Power Patron Tournament, had the APAC HCT Summer Playoffs going on this weekend. And, this was amazing. And our top eight from that event, 
and I'm probably going to butcher most of these, were <laughs> Ouya. There's a shocker. <laughs> Kribo, Machamp, Surrender, Horo, Kokosasa, Koko okay. Tom 60229, and Taco 3. Well, yeah, and, uh, at least what, you got the last one. What's <laughs> neat is Tom... Tom six zero two two nine is uh, a pretty well known player. Is a pretty well known player and also Frodan's brother. Really? So yes, he actually tweeted out there. My brother uh, qualified to to go to L.A. and I guess I kind of spoiled part two. Is the top four going to L.A. is going to be Uya, Surrender, Tom six zero two two nine, and Coco Sasa. Okay, awesome. Uh, and so in the finals, we had Surrender versus Coco Sasa. And Surrender ended up taking it all to become the APAC Summer Champion. So did you guys get to watch any of this event? Nope. I did get to catch some of the VODs. It came on really, really late. Uh, and and I, I caught a little bit of the beginning rounds alive, but I had to catch the VODs. There was some really ingenuitive play. And where you're seeing Europe and North America kind of flip-flop of, of going a heavy control, heavy, heavy aggro, but... All of them kind of do it all in that region, where in the APAC, you see just this huge mixture of of control and aggro, and they're very heavy with mid-range. They love their mid-range style. In classes, you wouldn't expect mid-range, like Priest and Shaman. So it was really neat seeing some of these ingenuitive decks. Now, customarily, when those type of decks go to the actual seasonal championship, they don't work very well. But I think... Uh, I think specifically Tom60229 and Ouya have the type of deck building that could actually succeed in the summer championships. I'm excited to see those two players specifically, even though they didn't uh, they didn't go to the finals. I think that they are going to be more prepared going to L.A. Yeah, yeah, I, I could see that. Rasika, anything you want to add? No, I... Um... Like I said, I didn't really get a chance to watch any of these, so I'm anxious to go back and look at the vod the vods, especially before, um, for the choose your champion. Mm -hmm. But um, I didn't get a chance to look at them uh, yet, so I'm going to reserve my judgment. Gotcha. And for those for those, we have one more week of playoffs, and then we will have the summer championships. So. When you will see the notice to choose your champion, and don't forget to wait until we <laughs> find out who Versika picks, so we can all get packs this time. That's right. That's right. We don't want anybody to miss out on packs because they pick their champion before Versika. <laughs> you have to be patient because I'm thorough. <laughs> so, all right. Speaking of uh, that, one more week of playoffs, we do have. Um, the NA playoffs taking place this weekend at venues all across uh, North America. And by all across North South America, America, I mean, uh, I think there's five, or maybe six venues in North America. But then you've got venues in Canada and South America as well. So, so there's six venues in the United States is what you're saying. Yes, there's six in yes. the U.S. There's two in Canada. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in South America. Yeah. I remember there were 16 or 17 total, if I'm not yes. mistaken. Yes, I believe that's correct. So uh, if you guys have a chance, go out, go to whichever venue is closest and check it out. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I've been talking to some of the other innkeepers that are running venues. A lot of great uh, a lot of great things are being planned for the weekend. Um, I, of course, you can go out and cheer on your favorite pros. Mm -hmm. uh, there's going to be uh, tournaments, fireside gathering tournaments run all weekend. There'll be side events all weekend. You have a chance to earn the Power Core card back if you don't already have it. So go out, support the uh, players, and have some fun this weekend. And if you just so happen to live in the New England area, uh, in Boston, Massachusetts, there is a venue out there 
that seems to be getting a lot of attention from the pro players. So you might actually have a chance of seeing some of your favorite players in the Hearthstone HCT, uh, you know, in the Hearthstone Championship Tour. And you can go by and say hi to a very, uh, very famous podcaster by the name of Avantis. Oh, uh, is he gonna he'll be, be there? That's he's cool. going to be at the Boston uh, at the Boston venue. I've never heard of that guy. Yeah, I haven't either. <laughs> Sounds like a loser. <laughs> and unattractive. Very unattractive. Well, if you guys are in the Boston area, um, we're on Saturday. We're going to have a standard uh, fireside gathering event starting at noon. Um, at four o'clock, we'll be doing Hearthstone Pictionary. So come out, nice. get the get a card, try to guess what's being drawn. Um, at five o'clock, we're gonna be doing uh, the raid on the Lich King this weekend. Cool. The fireside brawl event, and at six thirty, we will be doing a raffle drawing to, and giving away all kinds of free swag. So come out, hang out, have some fun. Uh, well, I'm not betting chat. I'd stay away. And go to KC. <laughs> I, I'm with I'm with Wild Dot Ben. Go hang out in KC. Those guys have a lot of fun. Those guys, there. they do have a lot of fun out there. I know Jr. from Well Met. Uh, he do, he attends those events and helps run them, <laughs> and, and he's wonderful as well. Um, the Tavern Brawl this week is called a Frozen Recipe. Uh, the Lich King spends most of his time cooking in between destroying adventurers. Pick a class and try out some of his deck recipes. And these seem to be the recipes from the uh, cr the deck creation, the deck builder. Um, the third choice over tends to be the current set. And uh, so far from what I've seen, that's what it is. I expected this brawl specifically like a week after the set came out. And that's what they did with Angoro. I'm kind of surprised that it's been so long before they did, did this. Um, any, have you guys played it at all? Oh yeah, we also played it at uh, Green's Tavern, if I'm not mistaken. I believe, yeah, is I believe it was the same side? type of decks. Yeah, this is not the Fireside Tavern Brawl. This is just open up to the public. But yes, I believe it is the exact same same decks. Uh, so Priest and Shaman are not so good <laughs> uh, that we kind of learned, but Mage is yeah. really strong. Yeah, if you want to win this Tavern Brawl, go with Paladin, Druid, or Mage. Yeah, yeah. Oh. There is one other bit of information, bit of news that I forgot to mention in the notes because it just came out. Um, it looks as if the date for the nerfs have been dropped, and it is going to be next Monday, the 18th. Now, if we have anybody in the THL or SHL, uh, the leagues that play, remember: do not submit your decks until after you've tested with the new. Uh, with the new nerfs, uh, I know that that uh, my captain, ridiculous, has making sure to to stress that uh, you'll have a couple days bef after the nerfs before you have to submit your decks. But uh, the the nerf should happen next week. That'll awesome. be after America's eight C T America's playoffs. Yeah, yeah, after the playoffs, but yeah. before the championships. So it, there'll be yes. we'll, we'll get to see some interesting. Shakeups come uh, summer championships. I'm I'm excited. Like no pirate warrior. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> all right, let's talk about uh, this deck. We're gonna be breaking down tonight. Um, this was one of the decks played by Terrence M. As Versika said earlier in the show, um, it looked like a lot of fun. So we wanted to kind of check it out. This was his Nazoth Control Warrior. And uh, so I'm going to kind of talk about, I'm going to read off the cards and then we're going to kind of talk about the deck a little bit. So it's two Whirlwind, two Armor Smith, two Battle Rage, one Dead Man's Hand, two Execute, two Fiery War Axe, two Slam, two Sleep with the Fishes, two Acolyte of Pain, two Mountain Fire Armor, two Shield Block, two Blood Razor, one Brawl, two Direhorn Hatchling, Harrison Jones, Karen Bloodhoof, Scourge Lord Garrosh, and Nazoth the Corrupter. So, all right, who has had a chance to play with this yet? I know some. I know Versika, you're missing a couple of the cards in the deck. Is that right? 
I am, but I watched Terrence play this a lot. Who's driving? Who? I'm not driving this one, am I? Because I don't have all the cards. <laughs> no, Avantes is driving. Yeah, okay, good. Uh, I have played a variation of this deck. Again, I am missing some key cards as well. There is another variety out there that actually has the two Dead Man's Hand, and it relies more on um, continually getting re recycling your removal, recycling those brawls, recycling all that armor generation. So it's almost like a fatigue warrior. This is more of a true control warrior where it does want to stall some things out, maybe get an extra brawl with Dead Man's Hand. Uh, definitely utilize extra sleep with the fishes. Uh, but it's more about trying to get more Cairn and more Death Rattle synergy to flood the board with Nizoth, the Corruptor, and then just go face with all these taunts and large minions. Well... When, when Terrence played this deck, he played it against Teebs. Um, and we had already said, I think it was KC that brought the other warrior that really focused on Mountain Fire armor. Yes. Um, so the way that Terrence went about it was he wanted to, he only had one copy of Dead Man's Hand, which in this deck is okay. Because you want to maximize your value from Dead Man's Hand. Um, this warrior is designed to beat out Priest in the Fatigue match. And, and really it beats out Mage in the, in the Fatigue match as well. But it's this when I see this deck, I see this as a direct counter to Razaka's Priest. So really the key points in this deck is you want to maximize Mountain Fire armor as much as possible. So you want to you want to build that armor up so that they the priest just simply runs out of resources and can't Tommy gun you down. So with only having one dead man's hand, you want to make sure that you have Nazoth in your hand and that you've already played at least one of your mountain fire armors before you play Dead Man's Hand and also before you Nazoth. Because what you want to do is you want Nazoth to bring back multiple Mountain Fire armors. You want your opponent to have to clear them, and then you want your second Nazoth to bring back even more. And if you're lucky, you will have had two Mountain Fires go down, Nazoth brings them back, you got two more Mountain Fires that go down, and then Nazoth brings three to four of them back. And at that point, you just run your opponent out of resources there's no way they can get back through the armor nice. um, so it's it's usually it's utilizing all of the card draw effects like battle rage like your acolyte of pain slam shield block um excuse me and so like there were there was one time in particular that terrence put out a blood razor never actually attacked with the blood razor he actually put a fiery war axe on top of it because he was really only interested in the whirlwind effect. So, in the in the uh, if you if you want to really see how the deck is designed to work to a T, watch Terrence M versus Teebs at this uh, last weekend's um, Dreamhack Montreal. You can see that even though things weren't exactly going to plan, you could see. How much he, how much Terrence valued each draw mechanic, and when he was willing to spend it. This deck is the epitome of what I would consider um, statistic analysis and chance. Like you, you, you look at it and you're like, okay, so this is my risk, this is my reward. I have this, I have this out, I have this out. And if, if, if I do this, my chances of getting this or this percentage, if I do this, my chances of getting this is this percentage. And then from there, it's, it's, it is so much like playing high stakes poker with people who know how to play. And I love the fact that this deck to me seems less like chess and more like poker. Nice. So that's, that's what I enjoyed about it the most. And I, I bet I've watched that match. 20 times i watched it again <laughs> before the show just because I, I feel like out of all the play i saw all weekend 
I feel like at any given moment, Terrence could have just given up because most of that game, even though Teebs drew uh, Anduin late, Terrence could have messed up in so many ways. And each time, each time he made a decision, he was evaluating the effect that that decision would have on the rest of his lineup. So he actually even took the deck into fatigue using shield block to draw the last card before he dead man's hand. So it was, it, it's just a classic example of patience and knowing how you're going to win against the deck your opponent is playing, which means that, you know, the next time that you play, that that is not your out. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, Terrence M won that match versus the Razakas Priest, and then the next match, I believe he went up in the Warrior Mirror against Pirate Warrior, and Pirate Warrior just completely dominated. So yeah. this is this is a deck designed to target the Razakas Priest. So if you're going to a tournament, this is actually very good in Conquest because you know at some point, right now, everyone is going to be playing Razakas Priest. So you know you've got one win against it in this right here. Yeah, I was really impressed with the play, both from Teams and Terrence M. Uh, they both uh, made it up to the the, the round, the single elimination uh, round of 16. Uh, but Terrence M, just the man performs at DreamHacks. Uh, he, he does really well down at Austin. He, he came up a little short down in Atlanta, but then he, he, he did really well make top 16 in uh, in the the – the Montreal tournament and Teebs is another one that that shows up. He's not really big in the HCT scene, but he shows up to all of the Dream Hacks and performs really well. I'm really bit I, like you. I like Last Hero Standing, and I've been really impressed by Dream Hack. I can't wait till next year when the American Dream Hacks go again, and we have Dream Hack Denver coming up. So I'm really excited what Dream Hack's going to bring for the rest of the year and next year. Yeah, yeah, and we've actually got DreamHack, yeah, you said DreamHack Denver's next month, right? Yeah, and then yeah. I think it's usually October, November time is when they'll announce the dates for next, next year. year. Yeah. So hopefully so. they'll be back down in Atlanta, and if they are back down in Atlanta, I'm going to make sure to be there again. Yeah, absolutely. I had such a great time. I've been talking to and people. And I'll be more prepared. Yeah. Uh, I, I will beat other people besides the rat. <laughs> Same. So, all right well i guess that brings us to uh our last thoughts of the night uh versica we'll start with you tonight what anything we talked about during the show or any last things you want to get in okay i have one piece of departing deck just core knowledge that i want to throw out there a lot of cards in hearthstone have tremendous value when they are either played or when they die. A lot of players will hold a card or will not play a card because they want to maximize the value they get from that card and they're waiting for the perfect circumstance. Sometimes the perfect circumstance is to put it out there because of the effect that it's going to have. And the one part that I want to talk about in the Terrence versus Teeves match. He throws out a naked Harrison Jones with Dead Man's Hand in his hand. He threw it out not because he thought that Harrison was going to get him any value on the board, but he knew he was going to fatigue. He knew that every card mattered, and he didn't want to reshuffle it with Dead Man's Hand. So it wasn't that Harrison Jones, offer, Harrison Jones offered him anything in the matchup. And because it didn't offer him anything with that Priest matchup, he got it out of his hand to eliminate a dead draw once Dead Man's Hand went back in to the library. Plays like that is what separate average players from above average players. You have to know when the card that you have is not going to affect your win condition and go ahead and put it out there. If you're lucky, you may draw some removal and they may end up having to clear it because they can't afford to have it on the board. And that actually, he threw it out into a Doomsayer knowing that he wouldn't get any value out of it whatsoever. So even with the Doomsayer on the board, he threw the 5-4 out because he didn't need it in his hand because he, the way that he had it figured out is he was going to dead man's hand the next turn. It's just something to think about. Yeah, and that makes a lot of sense. 
a turn tool rock pool hunter with no murloc on the board sometimes it's just the right play uh if you know your opponent's gonna come out with small minions like a, in in aggro an aggro druid or power warrior or even evolve shaman having the two three bodies more important than get than waiting and getting a one one buff um so and that's that's definitely good advice um i'm gonna take a versica seat this time and and go a little bit off of Hearthstone and uh, remind everybody, like I mentioned before, those devastated by Hurricane Irma in uh, the southeastern United States, in Florida, Georgia, and namely South Carolina, if you have friends or family down there, if there's any way you can assist in any way, make sure to do so. Also, there's lots of relief funds going out there. Uh, if you feel so inclined, reach out and help people out. But if you do have friends and family there, at least find a way to communicate with them and make sure they're okay. Absolutely. So, all right. And uh, I did miss this at the beginning of the show, and I apologize. So I want to get it in now. We did have one new patron this week, so I want to say welcome yes. to Wild Dot Ben. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That that was the one I was trying to make sure to remember too. There's so much going on this week. Wild Dot Ben. Uh, I'm for you. I wore my dad legend shirt tonight. <laughs> and that was one thing I wanted to make sure to mention. Thank you for supporting us. Uh, Wild Dot Ben is a huge member of the community. Uh, he does the dadlegend.com. Uh, definitely go and check him out. He has some wonderful merchandise out there too, too if you feel so inclined to get any of that stuff. Uh, thank you so much for uh, supporting us. We really do appreciate it. Yeah. All right, guys, so uh, if you are joining us on Twitch or YouTube, please stay tuned for the live play portion of our show. If you are listening via the audio podcast, we'd like to thank you for joining us. Remember, you can follow us on Twitter at HeroPower underscore cast. You can find all of our past episodes on YouTube at YouTube.com slash ECMMOGamers or on our website at HeroPowerHS.com. If you enjoy the show and you'd like to help support and improve it, you can do so by joining our Patreon at Patreon.com slash HeroPower. And we'll see you again next week. And don't forget to use your Hero Power. Alrighty, gentlemen. Well, I'm going to fire this puppy up and we'll... Uh, take this deck out for a little test drive so uh fair warning like i said i didn't get to watch a whole lot of uh dream hack so i did not get to see this deck played and i have not had a chance to play this deck yet so for me i'm going to be relying pretty heavily on you gentlemen well i believe uh versica is going to have the most knowledge on this deck so i'm kind of going to let him take a push while we're getting set up I do want to give a shout out to all of our patrons and friends of the show that have been sending me friend requests on Battle.net. If I did not accept it, please send it again. My friend list got full and I had to clean it up a bit. So feel free to send me a friend request again if, if you attempted to before. All right. So we are searching for an opponent. And we have something. Come on, Hearthstone. You can do it. My worst nightmare. Oh, no, wait. It's a worthy opponent. <laughs> Thought we were playing a spider. <laughs> uh, so we're. Uh, Chris, Chris in chat says, I use my hero power four plus times a turn. He must be playing <laughs> priest. <laughs> <laughs> all right so all right we're playing a druid surprise surprise and our opening hand is whirlwind scourge lord garrosh and acolyte of pain so i like i said i've not played the deck yet but i'm thinking throw back scourge lord and keep the other two acolytes okay um we really want to be gaining armor early so I am actually thinking I'm actually thinking to pitch Whirlwind and Scourge Lord. Okay. That sounds fair. If this is aggro uh, Druid, honestly, the Whirlwind's not going to help much because most of those menus are two-body anyways. That Warhex is going to be better. 
Gotcha. Which we got. So we drew the War Axe, we drew the Battle Rage, and we drew the Shield Block. So nothing to play on turn one, so we're just going to pass. Yep. Your Battle Rage is super important. You really would like to at least shuffle one of those back into your deck with Dead Man's Hand. Gotcha. So it's yes. a, still a little early. Yeah. So turn two, we're just going to armor pass? or Absolutely. Armoring up as often as possible. If you don't have an immediate threat that you need to deal with, you want to armor. This is a very... Think classic control warrior. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the mentality you kind of have to get into. Okay. So, uh, Mountain Fire Armor here? Yep. Just stick it down on curve and... Stick it down on curve. Do not, under any circumstance, um, kill that on your own. Right. Force him to do it. Force him to take care of it for you. Yeah, and in this case, if you do that, he's going to take four and you're going to take three. And with your armor generation, he has to clear it. Well, so, I would even go as far as to say this is a turn. <clears throat> excuse me, this is a turn where you fire a war axe, armor up, clear the mire keeper, and hit him for four. Okay. And we do want to clear it first to get value out of battle rage, right? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Make sure we take some damage early. Right. Yeah. He's going to be in a tough spot. He, he almost has to clear that, or, he, you know. Oh, there's Fandral. That's still not bad. Innervate. We're going to have to clear the Fandral. Coin. Though. Nourish. Okay. Oh, is he going to clear it? I would imagine he, he will. Wrath for one. Oh, wait, he has Fandral, so it has to clear it. Yep. yep. Oh, so we can clear Fandral. Yeah. So we're going to slam first. That's some armor generation, too. Trot down the armor smith. Go ahead and clear or Fandral because we know, we know okay. we're going to do that. And then I think you go ahead and lay Acolyte of Pain. Okay. So that we can then Blood Razor. Yep. Yeah, we saw the one Wrath. He almost would have to waste a swipe or use the second Wrath with no card draw. Exactly. There's nothing that we can put down at this point to threaten him with 9 and 9, or 9 mana. So what we're going to do is just make things inconvenient for him. Gotcha. Ooh, so this is the big Druid variant. Yeah. All right. Not the, uh, not the Jade Druid variant. So, okay. do we, we want to stick with the Blood Razor play? Go, go ahead and Blood Razor. Okay. So we can clear it with Sleep of the Fishes, but is that really a good way to do it? Go ahead and Battle Rage. And we'll, we'll take seven to the face. Still no execute. All right, so go ahead and smack him face with everything. But we wouldn't execute Medivh anyway. And the main reason for going to face with the Blood Razor is so we can activate it next turn if we want to, right? Right. Okay. Ooh, you got a bad pull off that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Execute. So we are going to sleep with the fishes this turn. After we attack. After we attack. So go ahead and oh, 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 oh. Don't we need to hit Medivh so we clear him this turn? We need to hit Medivh. So we are going to go ahead and take we're gonna gain it back in armor, so it's fine. Yeah. So go ahead and hit Medivh. Should we armor smith first? No. Okay.
That's a draw. Now sleep with the fishes. Sleep with the fishes. We got attack. Oh, attack first. Oh, yeah, attack attack base first. first. Yeah. Okay. Dire horn hatchling. Yes. Because we're also trying to get our death rattles out. Gotcha. Like I said, we... the dream is to get the mountain fire armors, but yeah. putting Direhorn Hatchlings back is not a bad thing either. Yeah, this this deck is so much card draw. There is a proper execute target. Gotcha. Yep. But how to activate is the, the question. Oh, just run the Direhorn in. Okay. Because we want those to die right now, anyway, yeah, right? We want them to die. So, and then follow up with Cairn or the other Direhorn. I would execute, follow with Cairn. Because we're not really in a straight where we need a taunt right now, right? And we have shield block in our hand, so that's going to generate some armor. We also have armor smith for when we get a decent board. Yeah, we want to try and work armor smith out in the next uh, turn or so, just so we can start getting some value from it. I'm really surprised by the pop there. That almost tells me he he's going to have an ultimate infestation. No, maybe not. Oh, he got the evolved. Mm-hmm. So he's used both swipes and one wrath. He doesn't have a lot of his direct damage left other than his ultimate infestations. Well, there's our matriarch. Okay. So what we're going to do this turn is we're going to go ahead and get our armor smith out. Go ahead and dire horn. And armor up. Okay. And we had to play this a little differently than normal because yeah. he got such a big lead so fast. Mm -hmm. So, he's very much teched against uh, pirates. Air's your mountain fire. All right. So, first thing we're going to do is shield block. There's the Nazoth. There's the Nazoth. Now we so need go to get ahead. the dead man's hand. Right. So we're going to put Mountain Fire Armor down. Now we're going to clear the two. We should probably clear that 2 2. The Cobalt? Yeah. Yeah, the spell damage. I mean, all he has left is Wrath and Ultimate Infestation, but that's a lot of damage. Yeah. And. I know we're tempted to put out Acolyte of Pain here, but what, what about think... running the Armor Smith into the two two, and then Battle Rage and Armor up? We still have eleven cards left, and that uses our last Battle Rage. Mm -hmm. So I would rather just go ahead and run the Armor Smith into Face and Armor up. Okay. Okay. That leaves two mana on the board, but we really would like to have that Battle Rage to go back into the library with Dead Man's Hand. We're already into our last 10 cards, really, mm -hmm. with Dead Man's Hand, so it's going to be that much more important to draw what we need. And this deck doesn't have the luxury of double Dead Man's Hand. Right. He is going to clear the armor smith. It's going to generate us some armor, and he is going to clear the mountain fire. Armor, it looks like. I expected that card to have a better name because Mountain <laughs> Fire Armor. I thought it was just a poor translation. <laughs> okay. So, so I would go ahead and Acolyte. Whirlwind. Whirlwind. Matriarch. Yeah, go ahead and do the Direhorn Matriarch. Okay. 
we're back up to 35. We got a we got some breathing room. Yeah. Wow, look at that armor. I right? I, I don't know. I didn't even notice that it went up that high. Man, <laughs> that goes up fast in this deck. Yeah, you got to you just have to be patient. I was too busy looking at our health. I was like 15. Oh my gosh, armor. So spreading plague for a couple of 1/5 taunts. Which is not bad. That actually plays right into our There's acolyte. There's a second wrath. For one? Yep. He is having trouble with that matriarch. What's he going to do with the rest of them? All right. So we're definitely going to run the acolyte into one of the one fives. Put out the armor smith. Clear the other one five with six six. Armor up. We don't want to scourge That's... lord. No, we can cause... scourge. If if you scourge lord, you lose your ability to armor up. Ah. So I would rather wait until after we've played in his off. Yeah. Okay. And we know we're getting frost fires back. So go ahead and pass the turn. Okay. So this is a big slow play deck. We're really just looking for that dead man tan at this point. Yeah. Right. Eight cards left. He must have another spreading plague if he's going to run the one for him. He'd have to. Gadget Zan. So he's going to start drawing some cards. Yep, and shuffling. Well, he knows he... we're taking him to fatigue. Yeah. Which, in this, with this deck, this is a tournament deck. He banned Druid most of the time. Okay. So he put us on a little bit of a clock. So the first thing we're going to do is clear the 1-4 with the 6-5. Well, hold on a second. Is I was going to say, was there any merit to Scourge Lord there? Because the one hit would clear both? Nope. Because okay. now we fiery war axe. Okay. Fiery okay, war axe I see, I see into the gadgets in. Acolyte of pain in to draw a card. Maximizing and, the amount of armor that we get from... And more armor. armor. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. All right. So Harrison Jones does us zero good. Mm -hmm. We don't want to have it in our hand when we draw a dead man's hand. So go ahead and play he, it. He has to deal with it, and he doesn't have swipe to deal with it now. So go ahead and play it and armor up. Okay. Or Wrath, at that matter. Pretty much all he has is Primordial Drake and uh, Ultimate Infestations. Yep. Does have an Innervate yet, but so that's a dead card. There's the other Spreading Plague I was expecting last turn. Silence. Good Silence target. That was smart by yep. him. Okay, go ahead and slam. We, we can clear his whole board. Uh, we can get close to clearing his whole board. Yeah, go ahead and slam the one five. There's the dead man's hand. There we go. Okay, so can we get any more draw though? We don't. We don't really want any more draw. Well, if we Do draw we... two more cards off of. Well, we want to shuffle the Battle Rage. Yeah, we want to shuffle the Battle Rage. So, what we could do is go ahead and clear one of the 1-5s with Harrison. Okay. Clear one of the 1-5s with uh, the Matriarch. Okay. Our clear the 1-3 on the with the face. One four into the two two. Dead man's hand. Battle rage. Okay. And then armor up? Armor up. I think we got it. Alright, yeah. Shoo. Oh. oh, you give me a heart attack. <laughs> First time I get to see it sit in a Max Nomic chair and I'm gonna have a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> so um Ducharmo in chat asks if you're playing this deck on ladder is there any merit to taking in a geist 
Yes. Mm-hmm. If you're going to take in a geist, I would recommend taking out one of the sleep with the fishes. You could take out Harrison. Yeah, Harrison is so good against a huge pirate warrior Arcanaut Reaper. Mm-hmm. All right, so... Want so, to go ahead and Nazoth here? Yeah, I would Nazoth. Okay, so that gave us two fire mountain armors, two direhorn hatchlings, and a cairn blood hoof. Yep. That's value. We're gonna have to start putting pressure to the face. We're doing that's what that's why we niz off to that turn. Yep. See, he took three there that he didn't want to have yeah, to take. Right. Yep. Definitely. And we have so much armor, we can survive these giants hitting us. We got an execute to deal with at least one of them. Okay, you're gonna love this. <laughs> so we're going to <laughs> we're gonna blood razor. Now we're going to whirlwind or not whirlwind. Yes, we're going to whirlwind. Now, we are going to run Cairn into the 8-3. Okay. I like it. Execute the 8-6. I like it. Some more. Face on the uh, 4-2. Okay, your face into the 4-2. Face into the 4-2. Got it. Everything else go face? Everything, Everything else, else to his goes face. Back. Okay. Armor up. Armor up. You're no joke about waiting Scourge Lord to the very end. Yep. And we've got two, so I mean we can refresh. Oh yeah, it. that's true. That six armor. Ooh. Oh, the other six armor. Oh, burn to idol, burn to idol, burn to idol. Oh, that's all he got left now is idols. Yeah. yeah. But he did not want to have to burn those idols. Nope. I mean, he could afford to. Okay, so you know what time it is? Scourge, Scourge Lord time. time. After we go to face. Oh, do we armor up first, though? Yeah. Yes. I think so. Armor up because you're not going to want to use Scourge Lord's power. So. Not yet. I mean, we still have an execute yeah. if we have to. Execute and right. see the if we have to. His jades are only five. Are only going to be five five next. Yeah. So I mean, they're not even big. Now he, we haven't seen the Malfurion Death Knight. I wonder if he's not running it. Kind of surprised by that. We're going to be doing a lot of going face, I assume. Depends on what our next card is. I'd love to draw Nazoth. If we draw Nazoth, it changes our play. Yes. There you Called go. It. Go Didn't ahead and fire Nazoth. him out there. Nazoth and go face? Yep. Go face with the 4-3 weapon? Yep. Yeah. Because we're, we're threatening lethal with just a weapon right now unless he armors up. Or ultimate infestations, which he's already used one. 
he has to clear our board. Mm-hmm. Or he's just dead. And he's got three taunts to deal with, and his jades, you know... Only two of them are big enough to clear a taunt. Yeah. Oh, you death wing. That still is not bad. It still leaves us an five. And we got a 4-5 yeah. on the board. Yeah, he's dead. That's game. Yeah. yeah. Hey, we got him. Straight up dead. It seeds to you. <laughs> hey, this deck is fun. It's got me on the edge, <laughs> the edge of my Maxnomic XL series seat. <laughs> All right. I have to get back to my wife after the show's over. <laughs> <laughs> I appear to be stuck in this screen. Ah, the client crash. Gotta love it. That there's been kind of a history of that in the last since the last uh, patch. All right, I'm gonna kill it and relaunch it. Okay. We got time so, for one more. Yeah, I think we got time for one more. So first, first game with it. First impressions. A lot yeah. of fun. I mean, it, it, it has so many answers. And yeah. yes, Matt at Arms, I corrected myself. I corrected myself. Yeah. Drew would concede. <laughs> that a crip face. <laughs> Funny. All right, let's see here. I do like if you're on the ladder putting... I would probably take Harrison out because um, Harrison's really good against Paladin right now, but you're not seeing a ton of that on the ladder. Harrison is very, very good against Pirate Warrior. That's why yes, but at the same time, I think this deck, if it's going to beat Pirate Warrior, it does it in the first five turns, and Harrison's kind of negligible at that point. Uh, I think it wins by early, by early removal and then just at that point, Power Warrior is exhausted. Yeah. And Power Warrior, as seen by Terrence, does seem to be one of the weaknesses of this deck. All right, so Hearthstone is still showing as running, so I can't relaunch it. And it's not yeah. showing anywhere in my processes in Task Manager. Fantastic. Interesting. So, um... Hold on just a second. You can't even spectate me, can you? Nope, because I can't get into the client at all. Oh. First time in 98 episodes this has ever happened. Well, I think that then, uh, any last thoughts for this week, guys? Well, I hate that. <laughs> oh wait 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 wait! wait I think wait, I may wait. have found it. Hang on, in task. Die, die. Oh, die, die, die! Oh my god! And this is where this is where Vasika brings up uh, uh, Windows Ten. That you must be wanting Windows Ten. Yay! Right. I didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I don't have to anymore. Yeah, we'll blame Salathiel because he just started watching right as it crashed. Salathiel, come on, man. All right. <laughs> All right, getting back in. One more <laughs> hurrah. Oh. Yep, there we go. Uh, Ducharmo asked, how much was the seat and where did you get it and how does it feel? Um, I got it at needforseat.com for my wonderful wife. Um, I, I will eventually get one myself. Um, it The XL series runs about, uh, I think it was 550 After tax and shipping stuff, it's just under $600. It feels like the best thing ever. I, I have back issues. Uh, uh, and this thing is the most comfortable chair ever. Uh, we justified. Right, I'm going to interrupt you. The purchase. Uh, we've got Battle Rage, Whirlwind, and Blood Razor in our opening hand. What are your thoughts on keep and throw away? Well, you definitely go throw away Blood Razor and Whirlwind. Yeah. You could make cases for keeping Battle Rage. 
Um, you probably should keep Battle Rage until we know what kind of druid it is. So I would throw away Blood Razor and Whirlwind. All right. And we get Mountain Fire Armor and Dead Man's Hand. Well, Dead Man's Hand is going to be a dead card in your hand for a while. Right. But That's at least okay. we don't have to wait till late game to draw it. Yep. So just going to pass on turn one. And to and finalize my quick answer. Uh, no such thing for I, I justify I, we justified the purchase because this is the primary uh, furniture that we use in the house. Yeah. All right, so turn two, just uh, armor up, pass. Yep. And do Sharmo, I've had, well, we've had this one for I've had mine for almost two years now. It's been almost two years, right? It has. You got it just after it, we started the show. February of twenty sixteen okay. is when we got it. So yeah, like a year and a half. So a year and a half. It is still like the day I bought it, and I have to remind myself to get up. <laughs> like I can, I can marathon gaming sessions, and I have to remind myself to get up and walk around. So I, and I'm Madden, gonna try, trot Madden out Arms. the mountain fire armor on curve. Yeah, you trot out the mountain mountain fire armor, and you do not trade it under any circumstance. Yeah, right. Even if it's like a one-one. Even if you can trade it into a one-one, you could do value trades with it. You just right. don't want to kill it. You just don't want it to die. If you're going to yeah. put that out there right now, I would go ahead. I would slam. I would Aya. slam Black Paw first. Okay. Warax or to clear or. Yeah, I would Warax to clear. And then you can clear the two two Jade with the exactly. mountain fire, clear leaving the him, and he'll have to run the one one or run his face into it. Right. And a lot of players, because mountain fire isn't a popular warrior card outside of control warrior, a lot mm -hmm. of warrior players don't really understand how it works. Mister Meesinks does though. He's yes. going right to face. He knows what not to do. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, two of them. Can he deal with two? So I would go ahead and shield block. Okay. Then trot out the armor Ooh. smith. Trot out the armor smith. Take out the 3-3 three, three with your face. Yeah. This makes it awkward for him to clear the armor smith. He'll generate his three armor if he does. Can't really swipe. Bone Ooh, mare. Yeah. Bone mare is kind of rough. Yep. He knows what this deck is about. And he is... Yeah. Okay, so first thing you're going to do is battle rage. Hope you draw into an execute. Okay. Nope. Nope. Alright, so... Slam the 6-7 and try to get a battle rage? Slam the 6-7. Nope. Armor up. Don't, I the, mean, the, the we can run them both in and clear, but we don't get armor. We'll get it back with the Nizoth, but yeah, that's tough. Yeah. You want it to go the other direction, but you have to clear that 6-5. You have to. So yeah. you want to yeah, run the 4-1 in. Run the one four in. He's gonna be a jerk about it. Yeah, squelch the jerk and armor, armor up. up. Yep. I'm surprised at the one twos because this deck does a lot of whirlwinding. Okay. So I want you to Blood Razor. Fiery War Axe. Fiery War Axe. 
That's, I like that last. That's pretty sneaky. And go ahead and clear the bone mare. Bone We're mare. in a tough spot, but that, unless he gets some card draw, we're not that bad off. Yeah. He he just had he a, a really good too. good opening. He had a great opening. Mm. Well, I mean, it's Jade. It's what Jade does right this now. This is so. the true Jade. This isn't that big druid. Yeah, so Direhorn Hatchling. Mountain armor Fire up. Armor. Oh. armor up. Okay. Clear the 2 3. Okay, we'll take that. There we go. Nash! A main deck Nash. I like this guy. <laughs> so, Blood Razor into Sleep with the Fishes. Yep. Into shield block? Yep. That's really all we have. Yeah, and then go ahead and set it face, right? Yeah, because we want to set it up for next turn. Yeah. That used way too many resources. Yes, yeah. it did. So. I'm wait waiting for ultimate infestation coin hero power. We haven't had any dire horn. Yeah, we've had one dire horn hatchling die. Yep, and we've had we one mountain had... fire armor die. Had much die. Plus, we really need to use dead man tan before it is off. Yeah, you draw a dire horn hatchling. Ha ha! So dead man tan and then dire horn. That doesn't help us, does it? No. No. I don't. I think we're doa. Uh, One eight seven. I believe you are correct. Yeah, that would have had to have been sleep with the fishes. We could have worked with sleep with the fishes, I think, but I think that will pretty much do it. Go ahead and act a lot of pain. Then hit the three six. Almost a armor three, up. Yep, hit the three six. But nothing we draw will. I mean, he's going to clear it and then yeah. ultimately end up smacking us. But yeah, oh, just see he how was close really he was. fast. Yeah, he was. He had a really good opening draw. He was really. I mean, fast. look at it. I mean, he got all of his bottom end. And with Nash and Cold Light Oracle, he's tech to be a little faster than a normal J Druid. All right, so there you go, one and one. Yeah, and yeah, he did that without Jade Idol. Yeah. So. Yeah, he uh, he didn't use one Jade Idol, did he? I don't think so. Nope. Probably had him in the deck, but definitely didn't use him. Yeah. All right, you guys want to try to get one more in since that went so fast, or do you want to just call it at one and one? Well, I mean, we've got we've got the Tom. Let's let's see what we get. All right. Okay. Not face. <laughs> uh, Matt Adams says, love rot face. Dushar says, not face, because he isn't going to any of my decks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, That's so we've good. got a hunter this time. I love our listeners. <laughs> our opening hand is Scourge Lord Garrosh, Karen Bloodhoof, Battle Rage, and Execute. So... All right, so the good news is we took the coin from him. Yeah. That's actually yes. more important than anything else we've got in our hand. Especially Hunter. Yep, so we're throwing back Scourge Lord, Cairn, and Execute. Okay. Well, this opponent, we're playing Sheen, so you know he's winning. <laughs> well, that's good. We we drew uh, War Axe and an and, uh, Acolyte, so. 
And Come on, that was funny, Brasica. That was funny. Oh, it was funny. I'm, I'm laughing <laughs> on the inside. So, do we want to just pass on turn one, or do we want to coin into... No. We're going to coin into Armor Smith. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Um, common play is one health minions, and it plays perfectly in that. If they coin out something, uh, or they can't coin out, if they, on turn two, they put out a 3 2 or 2 3, then we have Wait, a, with a the war axe. Yep. Yep. Ooh. So we are going to war axe, and we're going to hit face with the axe. Just in case it's freezing trap. Yep. Or freezing if trap. If it was triggered on that explosive, if it was explosive oh, trap, right. you know. Yeah, we're we testing for explosive without the chance. Now we now don't want to go face with armor smith, right? No, we're gonna we're gonna keep the armor smith back. Yeah, because okay. we don't want to risk a, free, a freezing trap on the armor smith. Yep. If we do anything with the free, freezing trap, it'd be more like an al uh, uh, acolyte, right? Correct. So there's animal companion. Harrison Jones is actually really good in this matchup. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and put down the acolyte and hope that it's a snipe. Mm -hmm. Bam. Worked. Good call. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and clear Misha. Sounds good to me. Run the armor smith in, and then we'll clear Misha. Okay, I like that. Nice play call. Like I like that. Into Huffer, always. Huffer. That's fine. We're gonna give him a target this turn. The so mountain fire armor. We're going to mountain fire armor. If he decides to ignore it, then Direhorn out. What? What is going on? Is this Space Hunter? So oh, now, yeah. oh, oh, nice. Oh. So run the four three into the one one and slam. The starving buzzard. Um, I like direhorn hatchling and run the yeah. four three into the one one. Yeah, I like the direhorn hatchling better here because it's going to take both of his minions to clear. He's going to get some card draw. Oh, it's for summon beasts. For some reason, I keep thinking it was di beast dying. No, no, it's summoning beasts. So he is going to. Clear it. Yeah. Okay. Need another taunt? No. Nope. Karen works. Threat. Yeah. I think he's gonna ignore it though. He probably will. So we're a little early for the double kill command, so. Char rock, reckless rocketeer. What? what is happening? That's okay though. Hopefully he uses the high main. I think he to might clear. Yeah. Now we need a There's execute. It's not optimal. What about Do we battle rage, battle rage first? here? Yeah, battle rage is fine. Bingo. Okay. Oh, wow. So go ahead and Blood Razor. And that'll let us take down one of the two twos. Clear it with two two. Of course, Mountain Fire to face. Yeah. Yeah. He knows he has us where we can't use the weapon now. Hopefully, will cause him to overplay. And use the weapon anyways. If he fills the board enough, we'll have to. Yeah. There's another high main. I'm willing to bet that's explosive trap. So I say... Run the... Slam. Slam the high main. Okay. Pop. 
Play the armor smith. Play the armor smith. Attack face. Wait, do we go ahead and acolyte at all? Acolyte. Run the four one into the six three. So we okay. don't don't get the armor. Yeah, we're yeah we're not gonna get the armor. But at this point, right? We just need the, to survive. The high main is six damage, so it's yeah. like getting six armor anyways. So yeah. now we're gonna kill one of the two twos with the blood razor, and we're gonna draw a card and get a bunch of armor. Yeah. We'll negate we're not the a damage, bunch of basically. armor. We're gonna get yeah. two. We'll negate the damage, which is really what we need to do. Okay. Shield block's a good draw. Yeah. Okay. In the turn. So now we want him to run those two hyenas into the armor smith. That would be great. No divine shield. No liquid membrane. That's fine. That's fine. We can execute, execute that. It, yeah. He's gonna go face. Excellent. Yep. Alright, so we're going to run Acolyte in? Yes. That's fine. Draw a whirlwind. Effect of any type. Yeah, whirlwind would be awesome. Okay. So ex Not the cards. Execute the uh... shield block. Yeah, shield, shield block, block first. first. Okay. There's the whirlwind. There we go. Now whirlwind. And then execute. Cause, then execute. Yeah. Because the dire horn won't be enough. And armor up and pass. Yeah, don't attack face because yep. that is explosive trap. Yeah, almost assuredly explosive trap. Well, at this point, it's either explosive, hidden cache, or misdirection. Wow, a deadly shot on that. That's actually pretty good. It means he's not going to have it for the matriarch. Yep. We almost have to armor up every turn now to negate his hero power. So, oh, that's good. Yeah, so we're going to Dire Horn, Mountain, Mountain Fire, Fire, Armor Up. Armor Up, pass. Yep. That, that turn pretty much wrote itself. Yep. Yep. What he should do here is concede. <laughs> he should. Oh, no, he killed us. Armor. He gave us six armor. <laughs> he had to do it. Bestial wrath, so it's immune. Oh my gosh. Yeah, but it doesn't kill it. Nope. I mean. So. Battle rage. Battle rage. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Good. So attack the two four, and then play the dire horn. Yep. Yep. Armor up. Oh Pass. shit! I forgot. Eh, it's fine. You're gonna ruin our rating, sir. Now, one thing is to remember. I love this, this is guy. Good. <laughs> this guy, Meme Central. So we have the execute for that. We, we don't, don't need the execute. It. No, we can yeah. sleep. Oh, Scourge Lord, sleep with the fishes. Yeah, Scourge Lord, hero power, then sleep with the fishes, right? No, we, we can't, can't do all that. Well, that's not going to kill it with sleep with the fishes. No, we have to use our... Scourge Lord. Okay. We can execute. It's fine. Okay. So, because sleep with the fishes won't kill it because we can't activate our hero power as well. So it would have been four to the face. This should activate the explosive trap. Yep. Yeah, this guy has really impressed me. I'm loving that he's bringing <laughs> like, the old school. Just yeah, here it comes. Oh, he's zombiesting. <laughs> I I hope this is a deck that has Hemet in it. There's a version. 
that uh, I think it's Savitz that's playing. It has Hemet to get you to your uh, Rexar faster. So now we got to put on pressure because he's going to put out some really nasty yep. minions. So we're Harrison. going to put out Harrison. Yep. Face. Face. Pass. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. slam. Sleep with the fishes. Harrison Sleep in and pa uh, hero power. Yep, yep, yep. Nope. Nope. You're gonna, you're gonna hit it with the four one. Okay. Hit it with our weapon. We need to preserve our minion. Yep. Hero and power, power and blood razor. Hero power, blood razor. Yeah. Ah, okay. I'll, I'll, I see it. I see it now. That was a really big beast that he made, though. It was <laughs> pretty impressive. He's pretty much gonna. Pick any combination that adds up to eight that has taunt or any yeah. kind of staying power. Three seven. Okay. Ooh. Oh. Okay. Put it out there. So wait, before we do it, do we want to use our hero power first to I knock it down so. to a three six? Yeah. We, we can use our hero power. Yeah. That way. The, the matriarch kills it without us damaging our matriarch. Exactly. Yeah. Run our, don't run our. Yeah, he can't hero power us anymore. So run our face in. Run into our face the three six. Into the three six. It's a taunt minion. Okay, that's fine. I mean, you no, don't have to. Uh, uh yeah. No. It, All right, I mean, we are going to, to win or we are going to win or lose based on whether the next card is. Pretty much the next card Nizoth. is Nizoth or not. Right. Yeah, we need the Nizoth. But we've not seen our brawl yet either, so... No, we haven't. Yeah, but I don't know that our brawl... He's going to have one minion at a time. Yep. And to be honest, he's refilling with cards from his deck so he could start pulling out weapons and other minions. Descharmo he... says... I like the hero power build a beast. Reminds me of build a bear. <laughs> <laughs> a really nasty, disgusting bear. Okay, so this this isn't terrible. And, and there's there's an Azoth. But we need a dead man's hand first, right? Dead man's hand. Because because we, we want to have the second one in there. We want to clear the. Clear the three six with the six nine. Now we want to hit, yeah, with our face. Sleep with now, the fishes, whirlwind. Nope. We need to hero power. Okay. Sleep with the fishes. Yeah. Sleep with the fishes. Yeah, because if Pass. we had done sleep with the fishes first, it wouldn't have killed the. Uh... Right. The four three, good call. Good call, Versi. Yeah, main deck stack it on what? <laughs> this guy, I'm loving this guy. Okay, so first things first. Run this in and kill it with our face, or yeah. Yeah. Yep. yep. Run this in. Kill it with our face. Kill it with our face. Nizoth. Ouch. Nizoth. Yeah, baby. And see, now he has to... This is lethal. He has to do something. He has to have a beast. I don't think there's any beast that closes the four. He, the bloated bat might do something. That's just two damage, though. 
See, we got fiery war axe. Yes, we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have eleven right now. If he doesn't clear the mountain fires, even if he clears everything else and leaves the mountain fires up. Oh, for brawl. Oh, that he's would, looking for brawl. That would be great if he brawls. Yeah, it'd be that great would be for amazing. us. Amazing. That'd be great for us. Brawl would have been a snap pick, though. It's not brawl. Yeah. I think he's out of options here. Uh oh, the scent grows faint. <laughs> no, not not faint. See, there's the blood. Is that the blood bloat? No, no, it's just the. Send it all. Yeah. Get it. He's letting Maybe us kill well him. Thank played. you. Thank you, Charlie Sheen. We really appreciate that. <laughs> In our book, you're still winning. Winning. Duh. That that hunter deck was full of tiger's blood. That was so fun. Full of tiger's blood. And warlocks. Tiger's blood. I'm high on Charlie Sheen. All right. <laughs> nice. That's the reference. That deck is so much fun. Lots of fun. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, you guys have any last things you want to say about that that deck we just finished? Uh, Zorosia, we'll start with you. I'd make a couple modifications. Obviously, for the ladder, you want to, to put Skulking Geist in. I'm, I like the idea of two Dead Man's Hand uh, to continue, maybe shuffle another Dead Man's Hand if you get lucky. Uh, but I love this deck. It's really neat. If I had, I don't, I'm missing Scourge Lord Garrosh. Uh, and it it seems to be very important in this deck, in my opinion. So maybe if I get him soon, I I, I might try this deck out. Rosika? Same thing. I'm only missing Scourge Lord. Um, yeah, there's a couple of different things you could take out to put Skulking Geist in. I would definitely recommend putting in Skulking Geist for the ladder. This is a great tournament counter. So if you're going to be playing in any tournaments or fire sides where you're going to play, be playing either last year standing or uh, standard, then just consider it as an option. Um, and then bring Druid so that Druid gets banned and you actually get to play it. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. All right. Well, guys, that is going to uh, do it for us this week. If you have any questions or comments about the show, please email us at heropowerpodcast at gmail.com. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button below on YouTube if you've not done so. Uh, give us a follow on Twitch to be alerted when we go live. And for more details about our Patreon, you can find that over at patreon.com slash heropower. Until next week, good gaming. Bye, guys. Adios, muchachos. <laughs>